Hey friends, and welcome in to A Walk Through the Word, Daily Bread with Crystal Fry. I am your host, Crystal Fry, and in today's episode, we're digging into 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 11, to talk about a different way to spend our time, one that will truly benefit us in the long run. Thank you for being here with me today, and I pray that you will listen with an open heart to hear the Word of God speaking to you. All right, friends, let's dive in. God's Word is powerful. The missing link is our identity in Christ. When we know who we are and who He created us to be, that is when we can truly walk in freedom. You are never alone. There is hope, and that hope is Jesus Christ. Today we're digging into 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6-11, through 11, which read, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Verse 10, And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. You may be familiar with verse 7 in today's passage. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. This is definitely a verse that I have memorized and called on many times, especially in the past few years. But today, I want us to look at this verse as part of the passage around it, as we talk about a different way to spend our time. In yesterday's episode, we talked about the choice we have in what we're going to do with our time. Are we going to spend it being worried and distracted or focused on Jesus? Today, I want to build on that with this passage of scripture and what it tells us. Verse 6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. As I read this verse, I see this as a reminder to submit our lives to God, to surrender our will to his, and to allow him to lead us on the path that he has specifically designed for us. When we do this, When we fully surrender and trust and really allow ourselves to be guided and directed by our creator, he will lift us up in his perfect timing. And I also feel like I need to point out that this lifting up may not look the way we imagine or be in a way that we fully understand. It may not look like lifting up by the world's standards. It may not mean <laughs> it may not mean becoming rich and famous or worldly successful, but God's lifting of our lives is so much greater than anything this world could ever offer. So keep an eternal perspective on this, my friends. In verse seven, Peter tells us to cast all our anxiety, all our worries and fears, all our doubts, anything that's distracting us, cast it all on God. Give it all over to him because he cares for us. It's healthy, normal, and completely human to have questions, to have doubts, to have concerns, to ask why and why not. But when our minds are consumed with anxious thoughts or concerns that are rooted in fear, we are distracted from what really matters. And quite frankly, we often aren't able to fully show up for the kingdom assignment that we have been called to. But because God cares for us. 
because we matter so much to him. He is right here with us, ready to take the worries and fears off our minds and out of our hearts. He's willing to take them, but we have to give them up. We have to cast them on him and stop trying to take them back. Look, I get it. I'm still working on this one too. It's okay. <laughs> it's a practice. It's a, it's a process. <laughs> Verse 8 tells us to be self-controlled and alert. And really, this is the different way to spend our time that this whole passage of scripture is wrapping around. Instead of being worried and distracted, we are to be self-controlled and alert. Why? Well, because as the rest of verse 8 tells us, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Y'all, I don't know if I've told you how much of a visual person I am, but when I read things like this, I am imagining in my mind a literal roaring lion looking for someone to devour, prowling around. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be eaten by a lion. That's just not on my bucket list. And you've probably heard me say this before, and I promise I will continue to say it. (laughs) Just because we know who wins in the end doesn't mean that the devil is going to quit trying. He already knows he's lost. But y'all, he is a spiteful creature, and he is on a mission to keep as many people out of heaven as he possibly can. Hear me, friends. The devil doesn't have to get you to do anything bad. He just has to get you to do nothing. He just has to get you stuck and help you stay there with whispers of doubt, fear, worries, planting seeds in your thoughts about what you should and shouldn't do, what other people will think about you, telling you lies that sound like they might have a little bit of truth to them. And he does this because if you're stuck, if you're doing nothing, then you aren't doing what God has called you to do for his kingdom. And trust me, friend, if the devil can't get you, if he can't steal you away from the hand of God because you already belong to God, then he's going to go after all the people that God intends you to touch in this life. And he's going to try to keep you from making the impact that you were created to make in this life. Just a little food for thought. So what can we do about that? Verse 9 tells us to resist him, standing firm in the faith because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. James 4, 7, and 8 tell us, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. My friend, you are not alone in your challenges, in your struggles, in your difficulties, in the temptations you face, in your failures. And I don't care what anyone or anything tries to tell you. You are not alone, my friend. There is nothing new under the sun. As children of the Most High, we are mortal enemies of the devil. And he never tires of it attacking us, right? He never tires of trying new schemes to to get us to stumble and fall. So don't believe the lie that you are the only one going through what you're going through or that there isn't anyone else who would understand what's happening or how you're feeling. The enemy loves to separate and isolate us. Divide and conquer is a very real battle strategy in spiritual warfare. You know, Peter and James tell us to resist the devil by standing firm in our faith and by drawing near to God. Friends, we don't have to try to defeat him in our flesh. And honestly, we shouldn't try to go to battle that way because the flesh is weak. 
we have the full armor of God at our disposal, ready to defend us, available to us at all times. We belong to a heavenly father who will fight for us. We need only to seek him, to get behind him, to accept the shelter and protection that he offers. Now, at the beginning of this episode, I said I wanted us to look at this passage of scripture in the context of a different way to spend our time. Instead of spending our time being worried and distracted, let us be self-controlled and alert. We can do this by humbling ourselves under God's mighty hand, surrendering to God and submitting our lives to him. We can do this by casting all our anxiety on him, by giving him our worries, our doubts, and our fears. And we can do this through resisting the devil and standing firm in our faith. And why? Why should we do these things? What's the benefit to us, right? Like what's in it for me? Come on, it's all right. I know you're asking. Verse 10 tells us this. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. He will restore you, my friend. Just keep holding on to his truth, his love, mercy, and grace. He is faithful. And he will fulfill his promises to you. And let's just close today in in praise to our great and awesome God with verse 11. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, friend, for being here with me today. Y'all, it truly is such a blessing to be on this journey with you. And I want to know what's on your heart and what's on your mind today. So leave me a comment or send me a message and let me know. Come back and join me for our next episode where I'll be sharing my awesome conversation with special guest Dave Combs, songwriter, entrepreneur, successful business executive, and best-selling author. We talk about the impact of his faith And how God can take one inspired song and turn it into 40 plus years of music that inspires and uplifts others. And I can't wait for you to hear the one that started it all, Rachel's song. Until then. Hey friend, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. It's my pleasure as always to be here with you. If what you listened to today resonated with you, if you enjoyed listening to the show, do me a favor, go ahead and like and subscribe to this podcast and leave a review. Those reviews are so helpful. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate each and every single one of them. And go ahead and share this episode out with a friend. Invite them along for a walk through the word and let's enjoy that daily bread together. See you tomorrow.